Welcome everyone. This is the Quiz the Music Man podcast. I'm Tony Underwood. I'm the Music Man. And I'm going to be posting some short uh, podcasts and uh, video uh, blogs and written blogs. Uh, a little bit about how, how you can get started uh, in music. Because that's one of the questions people always ask me. And they ask many other questions that I know the real question they want is they want a kind of treatise on how to get started. Uh, the short answer is do it right now, <laughs> because the longer you wait, you just get older, and you don't learn anything about music. Uh, music is a process. We'll go through that a little bit, too, about, uh, you know, what you can expect when you take that. So let me uh, share with you a couple things uh, today, and the first one is going to be uh, if you want to be uh, a guitarist, learn to play guitar, how to choose a guitar. So there's really two important things about this. One is what kind of music you want to play. Uh, if you know specifically uh, one thing, so if you want to learn to play classical finger style, okay, uh, and that's all you want to learn. If you only want to learn a heavy metal, or uh, pure country, uh, or if you want uh, to learn to accompany yourself and sing or accompany others and play chords. Uh, chords are just uh, two or more notes at the same time. I don't know if this is... So, so a very out of tune guitar. We'll talk about that a little bit too. Once you know that, uh, you can choose the style of guitar to buy. With just about everyone, unless you already own a guitar, uh, I suggest you start with the good old uh, guitar like I was holding up here. Well, let me get this other guitar here. Here we go. Uh, this is just called an acoustic steel string guitar. And that's this. And you've seen it. Uh, a lot of country uh, stars use these. Now, the this might look a little different. You're not, not necessarily going to have holes up in this part, which is called the head, the very top where they turn those little things to tune it. But it doesn't matter. The important thing is it's an acoustic, which means it doesn't have any amplification. And it's like a box. It has some depth, and it's hollow inside. Uh, it's very light. They are delicate, but they're also very sturdy in certain ways. It just depends. Uh, and the strings are made out of metal. Now, I don't know if you can hear, but the way this sounds, uh, Guitar. Now, uh, I picked these for reasons that I'll, uh, we'll get into. Uh, for most people, this is the guitar you want. It is a steel string acoustic. It is not a steel guitar. That is different. That's a lap guitar they play on their laps, and it makes that twangy sound you might hear in Hawaiian music or country. It actually originated in, used, used in Hawaiian music, uh, that style of music, and came over to country. But uh, and country anymore really is just rap music with people wearing hats, uh, cowboy hats. So uh, not to judge or to take away from it, but it is. It's just very poppy and uh, rhythm and bluesy and has a beat to it. So this is the guitar for probably 90% of the people. And even if you want to, in the future, only play heavy metal, uh, you will have to learn other things. Uh, no one uh, or a good instructor is simply not going to teach you exactly what you need because then they can do that in a few months and you're on your way and you really don't know enough. Uh, you know, uh, if you were an architect and they told you exactly how to design a light socket and just told you about it and you kind of did it and it was okay and they said, okay, go on and you're going to just design light sockets and, you know, you'd say, well, I 
worked with an architect and said, well, build this building. You know, it doesn't work that way. And you're very limited. So for most people, the general all-around guitar is this acoustic steel string. Now the other one, the, the second one that you might want to learn, and it, it's, it would work for a while, and it looks as the same as the other guitar. Uh, it is a uh, classical guitar, and the reason it, it is it has nylon strings. Now these aren't, these are nylon with a steel around them, but you can hear that's a much different sound. And this is mostly for finger picking, uh, you know, uh, that people will pick each, you know, uh, uh, and so forth. This is out of tune as well, and there's a reason for that. Uh, but the sound is different, and also, if you notice this part where your fingers go, the fretboard is much wider, because a finger style might not look that much wider, but it's quite a bit wider up at the top, you can see. Uh, for those of you on the blog, you can't see that, but you have to take my uh, word for it. Where your, the left fingers touch down on the strings. It's much wider because when you do this finger style guitar, you have multiple fingers moving all over the place and you need more space. Uh, this, of course, too, is hollow. It's very light. It's very delicate, but it's also very sturdy uh, at the same time. And then the final guitar I'm going to show you is... Well, actually, I'll show you two more. This is an electric. This is an SG style. It's solid. Uh, and everything else looks similar. It has steel strings. Now, the difference is, see this hole? There's a hole there, and you plug in a cord to an amp. Uh, so you need an amplifier. I'm not going to show you an amp, but an amp is just a box uh, with electronics in it that you plug into. Now, you can also, through your iOS device and GarageBand, you can plug into that. You must get an adapter. Uh, and play right through that. They have built-in amps, but you'll need a, a speaker really for it to sound good. But even if you are just starting out and you're going to go ahead and do an electric guitar, which is fine, uh, it's not a problem. Uh, it's one of the three basic ones that you can use. Um, I would get a, even a small amp. You can get little tiny amps uh, that you plug into and use your headphones with, and your mom will probably want you to use your headphones anyway. Uh, a lot, and it's really better for you because it kind of gets you into that world of uh, uh, of playing. So excuse me while I sip my coffee. And this guitar has some knobs that control volume and tone, and a switch because the way it makes sound is on the body of the guitar, the big part where your right hand usually is if you're right-handed. There's two electronic devices; they're little squares usually. And they have magnets in them, and when the string moves, vibrations that picks up that electronic signal, sends it to the amp, and the amp amplifies it. Now, it does make sound on its own. I don't know if you can hear this. It will make sound just very little. So you can practice without the amp. You can get a little uh, thing that just plugs in that's almost minuscule, uh, that's not much bigger than the cord, and uh, a direct in that you can use for your earphones and things. Uh, but those are the three cut types of guitars. I still recommend the acoustic because uh, you're not going to get a super expensive first guitar and later your tastes are going to change and then you're going to decide if you want a better acoustic, different, if you want uh, a classical, if you want to get into that and buy a much nicer guitar uh, and uh, or electric and buy a nicer electric guitar. Now, having said that, how much should you spend? I wouldn't spend more than $200. I wouldn't spend under $100 unless you're getting a sale. Uh, if you want to know what brands to buy, go to a website. It's called Samash, S-A-M-A-S-H, dot com. Uh, they're a large music chain, and you can order online. They have great stuff. Now, other people do too, but I'm just saying, uh, if you're going to order from Amazon or whatever, uh, here's the problem I find with uh, people ordering from Amazon. It's not an Amazon problem. It's a person's, uh, uh, they'll get excited and they'll order something and it'll come and it's, if it's very inexpensive, you know, guitars can be very delicate in that way in shipping and it can be broken. Or the spring, string's broken and there's nobody there to help them with it. And they send it back and they got to pay shipping and then they get the other one and it's not right too. And since you haven't checked it out, it might not fit you. And they say, you know, I'm just through with this. And they either throw it in the corner and don't take lessons 
or they send it back and don't take lessons, <laughs> or they start taking lessons and have got a really bad attitude. And, uh, you know, nobody wants that. So what I would say is uh, if you are going to uh, go the Amazon route, make sure you know what you want and know what you're getting and be savvy as to that working. Because people who are savvy with Amazon are fine with it. They understand that. They might have to pay shipping. They will have them return the shipping. They'll get the return. They'll do all those things. Uh, but some people, it's just not for them. So uh, you can go to a store, you can go to an independent store as well, I'm not saying don't. Uh, but there are some things to look for. Let me share with you why. If you can see, if you're on a, a sighted blog, uh, this back, this neck, is, when I run my finger down, it's very smooth. Now also, the front of this neck, the edges, I'm not going to rake my hand down, but I'm going to carefully feel these little metal ends, and they're very smooth as well. I'm going to look up here at the top of this little band. This is black. Sometimes it's white. It's where the strings go in. There's little valleys that the string lays in. This is called the nut. It's smooth and the strings are in there and if you kind of move the string it doesn't notch or crack or anything. And then now at the bottom, which is the bridge, the strings go into that. See how everything looks nice and smooth and even. Now this isn't going to be even. This is an actual adjustment where you can adjust them up and down. But then if you look this way, in between the strings and the pickup, it's very even. And then the strings and the neck, you can see a small little hole. As you sight down, do all those little black, uh, metal uh, bands that are called frets, are they around the same height? Are they warped or anything? And the space, is it fairly even and fairly small? The space should be on an electric guitar, very uh, maybe three or four of the big strings. Uh, there, maybe uh, an eighth, an inch or less. On an acoustic guitar, they can be more up to a quarter inch, and they even more. It's a little harder if you're young uh, doing that. So those things also go for a regular guitar, and you can have the person play it, but that doesn't always mean anything, because if you look at this guitar, I don't know if you can see very closely, it's a little, see that it's actually showing a little warp there, it's a little worn, it, it doesn't, I mean even anybody can tell that doesn't sound. If you turn these tuners, they're not very smooth, uh, it's like they're jerky and they're hard for a little bit and then they'll get soft and they'll get hard again to turn. Uh, that's just an inexpensive guitar that, that really uh, uh, you shouldn't uh, get. And this was not an inexpensive guitar necessarily, but it's seen a, a good life. And uh, I still use it uh, to teach and th different things, but uh, uh, it's also a good indication of what you kind of stay away from in the beginning. And there's actually even a crack here along the neck. Uh, so those things, it doesn't rattle. You can slowly tap it. It doesn't rattle or anything. So you're okay there. Uh, so other than that, if you buy from a uh, place, you know, I would say get something that has a return warranty or has a warranty with it. There's no electronics and, and I'm not going to tell you to get an extended warranty, that's just up to you. Um, now, some acoustic guitars have a plug-in. Uh, I'm not going to show you, but it's just a plug-in here and it has a little bank of knobs that you can plug in and play electric. It's not the same as a, a solid body because it, it gets what's called feedback and it sounds a lot different. For some things it's better, for others it's not. Uh, but it is a good all around. I've played a acoustic electric in many performances uh, and uh, if you get a good one and do it right and, and set it up right, you're good. But, you know, and a, a solid body guitar is just a more unique, specific type of music. An acoustic guitar is more specific. So that would be general. You can also buy a pickup that just fits in here uh, and so forth. So uh, uh, that's kind of that. Uh, and so now the, the most important thing for a beginner though is size. Because if you notice, if I set this, this is on my leg and I can easily reach this and my, I put my hand on this big part and I can reach right down here. I'm going to show you guys here. So it's easy. Now I've had some kids there, they're like this. Well, they, you know, and they're trying to play this guitar, it ain't going to work. You're always better off with a little bit smaller guitar. You can get what's called a three-quarter or a half or a quarter 
uh, and uh, the sizing is the most important. You should feel uh, fairly comfortable just with the size of it and then later with how it sets up. Um, so the other thing is price. I said I wouldn't spend much less than 100 much more than 200 If you go to a shop and they have a $500 guitar discounted half off or something, that's your choice. A lot of times kids start up the guitar and then don't like it. I have a music school, so I see that a lot. So I caution parents that they, they want to get involved in music, but they're not sure what they like yet. So they might try something and move to something else. So don't spend so much money up front uh, because it's much easier to transition to another instrument and have a long and successful and happy life than to get hung up on that $100 I spent. You know, you go a few times out to one of the fast food restaurants, you've spent that money. Uh, so if you feel more comfortable uh, in person, go to a shop, let them show you one. Uh, you can research the brands, you can just research the, the biggies. You know, Gibson, Fender, Yamaha, uh, Dean, Gretsch, uh, there's just, you know, Epiphone, there's just tons of brands out there. Some are good, some are bad. Uh, so, uh, you know, just get your basics. Now, along with your uh, guitar is going to be accessories. There's two that you must have. You must have some kind of book, and usually it's the old, uh, the Hal Leonard, you know, guitar book. This is a, a volume of three books in one, but just the beginner, you know. Uh, they, Mel Bay makes one, there's tons of them. Uh, all other publishing companies make them. Get a book. Even if you're an instructor, get an instructor that works with a book, even if they just give you sheets out. Uh, because except for a, an instrument like violin or something, uh, you really need to start off with your book. Um, the other thing you must have is a music stand. And this is a music stand here. This is a breakaway one. It's just a bunch of wires that folds down into a little thing. Uh, and the reason is you want to keep your guitar out. You don't want to put it away in a case. In fact, you probably just want to buy a $20 gig bag or nothing and either get a guitar stand you can get for $10, $15 or just lean it up in the corner where it's you know not going to get knocked over. Uh, wherever you practice, a nice quiet place that's not too far removed, you don't want to be exiled into the you know, uh, far back 40, but you want to have a nice quiet place that you can go and you want to be able to immediately practice. You don't want to have to get stuff out and look stuff up. Have your book open, have your guitar standing there, uh, uh, and you can just pick up and go. Now if you don't have a music stand, get two kitchen chairs and put, put them facing each other and put your music on the other one. Okay. And uh, I'll give you a little tip. Make sure my music is going to be uh, right in front of me, which if you're watching, it's the camera. So I'm going to sit where my headstock of my guitar is pointing at my music and my hand is here so that now I can see my music and my left hand. And that's what's important. I can glance down at my right if I'm picking, but then when I go back, it's right there. It's just a glance away. Unfortunately, students will point away from that. So they look down, they look to the left, they look at their music. They look left, they look down, they look at their music. They look, and they never get anything done. That's a simple thing to do. Uh, so that's the main accessories. Others you can get is a footstool or a bunch of books, which is just to elevate one of your legs. You can put the guitar on either the right thigh or the left thigh. It doesn't matter. It depends on how your body's built. Uh, but a lot of times if you lift that leg and put it on something, it makes it a lot easier for you. Uh, picks, you're going to need some picks, and a lot of times they'll give them to you. You can just buy a bag of just norm, general picks and find out one that you like. Uh, tuners, electronic tuners, you can just download an app on your phone or you can get electronic tuner. It's up to you. Uh, manuscript paper and a metronome. A metronome, again, you can use your phone or device and download one. Manuscript paper is fine, but also just white paper clean because you can write out five lines and start learning that yourself. So let's, when you're looking for your guitar, you want a smooth neck, no burrs, no cracks or blemishes, no rattles. Uh, the tuners are smooth, the little things you turn. Uh, strings look even. Uh, 
the strings aren't too far away from the fretboard. Uh, and it fits you. It's got to fit you. It has to be where you can reach out. Uh, you know, when you have your guitar, you should comfortably rest your upper right hand for a right-handed person and then your upper right arm. And then your hand is right above the sound hole or near. And then your left hand I'm gonna, it's just easy. See how I'm not reaching out? If you gotta reach out like this, and, you know, can't look, you have to have good sight. Uh, it's not for you, it's too big. So get a smaller guitar. Uh, and uh, don't get, you know, something like, a, a, I don't want to name names, but uh, the word that would come before second and uh, 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 act. <laughs> So, uh, you, know, you know, that's that's a nice, that can be a nice guitar for a three-year-old, but even a three-year-old taking lessons, go ahead and get them a decent guitar. And this is an investment in your children. Uh, and I submit, you know, oh, I, I'm not going to spend $250. I spent $100. I saved that $150. You know, where is that $150? I mean, where is it? You know, uh, what you do with it? What's so important? Did it, did it build your 401k that much? Uh, you know, uh, so put some money into this because it's a big investment and getting a decent guitar is uh, important. And if you don't know, ask your instructor. Now, if they're selling guitars, that's one thing, but I've sold guitars for many years and uh, people would pass up the best opportunity there was, the one I sold, because I didn't make money on it and I only got good guitars and if something went wrong with one, I would just give them a new one and take the old one and fix it and use it or throw it away or still use it to teach or the instructors can use it but uh, so make sure you invest in a decent guitar and now let's talk about mapping out music lessons so how does it work so here's the things you're going to do when you're doing music you're going to learn to read music you're going to learn there's only eight notes now there's 12 tones, but only 8 notes. It's A through G, and then it repeats. That's it. There's uh, only 4 different types of rhythm that you're going to encounter. 4 different rhythmic notes. Maybe 5 or 6, but it's not that big a deal, and they just split up. There's a whole note, which half of that is a half note. Half of that is a uh, quarter note. Half of that has a little flag on it, is a... Eighth, eighth note, half of that is a sixteenth note, and you'll learn all about that. The notes come either on the beat, one and two, and so they'll be on the one, two, three, four, or the and, 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 and. There's six strings on your guitar. Uh, there's uh, basically in the beginning three frets, one, two, and three. There's five chords, uh, the one, uh, one, four, five, which are major, and the three and six, which are minor, but there's just five of them. Uh, and the chords are what people, when they play, uh, let me pull this guitar. It's in tune, I think. This is an acoustic electric. You can see it's got a hole in the back for the plug. There it is right over there. And uh, the knobs and things. But it's not plugged in now. You can hear it. So, chords. And, you know, when you're playing, uh, So that's, you're playing your notes. So you're going to spend about, uh, I would say, three to six months learning about your strings and reading. Now, if you wanted to accelerate that, I, I hardly recommend downloading a music training app called uh, uh, Muse, what is it? That's crazy. I don't even remember what it's called, do I? Music Tutor. That's it. Music Tutor. Uh, or there are many others. What it does is it drills you. It shows you a note on the staff and you have to call it out. And it also plays the pitch so you get used to that as well. And you don't have, you know, five minutes a couple times a week. Uh, I have had kids for years have trouble reading, playing piano. And I give them this thing and I would just do it with them in the, in the, uh, lesson once a week because they wouldn't do it at home and in four or five weeks they went from just zero to hero they were some of the best music readers so 
it works really well with adults as well. So three to six months and then three to six months on cords. So you're looking at six months to a year for an adult, an older teen. You can be playing songs. And I submit, where were you a year ago? Just think, if you'd taken it up just one year ago, you'd be playing songs. Now, music is something you can, you can learn for the rest of your life, uh, but that's basically it. So, let me just share with you, uh, there's no payoff or destination for this. It's the journey. Musicians and artists never stop learning. It's about the journey. Uh, you do multiple repetitions, like 100 to 200 times of very small pieces, like two to five notes, over and over again. That only takes you less than a minute or two. You link those together. You do that a couple times a week. Within a month, you've learned a really complicated piece, uh, two or three months. I've had it, so many people say, well, I took music for five years when I was in high school or whatever, and I've been trying to learn this piece. And I'll say, well, what piece is it? And they'll tell me, it's Fur Elise by Beethoven. And I'll say, well, how long have you been trying to learn it since then? Well, for 10 years or 20 years or 15 years, or I got it out six months ago. You know, that's a three-month piece, easy. Uh, it, it's just the couple things you have to do. Uh, anybody can do it, anybody. So that's my uh, uh, show today about how to choose a guitar and a little bit about practice and what it means to take lessons. We'll talk a little more. We'll go over some of the other instruments. Uh, so I hope you enjoyed this. Quiz the Music Man. Uh, you can also find my music, Tony Underwood Music, on YouTube, uh, on Spotify, Apple Music, everywhere. Uh, and uh, go check out uh, the Underwood School Facebook page and like it. That's my school that I teach. And we'll see you soon with some uh, more on this subject with different instruments. And also I'll go into a little bit more about uh, mapping out lessons for you. So until then, have a great week. Until next time, bye-bye.